this Canelo versus uh, Golovkin three undercard. A bunch of damn filler fights. That's what it is. Now, yeah, you got guys like Mark Castro and Diego Pacheco. Gabe Rosado is always going to get a get a payday. But what really on this undercard is really like, yo, now Bam Rodriguez taking on Israel Gonzalez. That's just that's just that's a filler fight. That's a filler fight. You know, this is a fight that like, you know, we're rewarding you for having such a great year. Let's put you on the zone's biggest card, one of the biggest cards of the year. You know, with Canelo Golovkin three. Israel Gonzalez, I've covered him before, 28-4-1 and one with 11 KOs. Probably when he fought Chocolo Tito. Yeah, I covered this fight. Definitely did a video on that. When he fought five, Sherwin and Cajas, I probably did three videos on this guy. But I expect for Bam Rodriguez to put a boot in his ass. That is the chief support to the Canelo uh, versus Golovkin 3 undercard, which really has no real buzz. What's the ticket sales looking like for this joint? Is anybody like hype in this economy and this recession now? It's a recession now. You know, a, a, a pack of chicken breast. Before at my local supermarket, I would get a, back, a pack of the, you know, the regular boneless chicken breast, the full boneless chicken breast where it's like five that come in a pack, the long pack. I used to be able to get one for like 10, no more than $11. Now that shit's, 15 16 dollars bro in this economy so who the hell or where do these people think they get off just charging us all these pay-per-views after they said they wasn't going to charge us pay-per-views what happened to that now all of a sudden i gotta have a the zone subscription oh by the way i cancel my the zone only until next week. I'm going I'm to pay for it on Friday when my stamps come in. But I canceled the zone, you know, because it's like, yo, every time I get a chance, I'm going to cancel you until your next fight. Like, you're not going to be getting my money. I remember how they disappeared on us. You know how they say when somebody get paid, a broke person, when they get paid, they get their check and then they disappear on everybody. Remember the zone did that to us all during the pandemic? Where like during the whole pandemic, they was charging people and some people had paid for a whole year and they just fucked off for like fucking five months. No fights like three, five months. How long was it? No way. I, and after that, my trust was broken. What's that called? Consumer trust. I was like, yo, anytime they get a chance, they'll skate off with our money. What if the monkey pox hit and we got to get shut in our houses again? And, you know, no, nah, dog, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, I cancel their asses. I'm not paying. Listen, I pay for a lot of shit, man. My ESPN plus Disney Hulu package, that will never get canceled. But the zone and my HBO, that ain't going nowhere. Or my Paramount Plus, Beavis and Buttheads back. And my Peacock, WWE. Those ain't going nowhere, but I will cancel the shit out of the zone so fast. I don't play that mess. Not with my valuable dollar in this tough ass economy. Charging all these pay per views and shit. And then. And then I've been bitching about it all week. I think they're going to try to put Usyk Joshua 2 on pay-per-view. I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it. Tell me, come on. I don't trust them. I think they're going to do it. By the way, how much do you think this pay-per-view is going to do on pay-per-view buys? My gut is now telling me, because we talked about it yesterday, where pay-per-view streaming is dying. Virgil Ortiz fights uh, Michael McKinson next week on The Zone. That's also next Saturday, the same night as this card, as uh, the Jake Paul um, Seam Rockman card. But a fight that I'm interested in is they have Blair Cobbs taking on Maurice Hooker. Whew. That's what I'm interested in. And you got Marlon Esparza. I put the um, fights down below in the description box. So once again, you guys never, ever, ever read the damn description box. But down below... I put the fight schedule for Showtime, Top Rank, BT Sport, The Zone, the links to my social media. My podcast is starting in a couple, not even a couple of weeks. Next week, I'm shooting my first episodes on Monday. You know? 
No, I'm talking about here in the States. I think they're going to put Usyk Joshua 2 on pay-per-view. I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it. I'm talking about some pay-per-view is dead. Now, all of a sudden, you know, we got to pay for a streaming service and then pay-per-view. And then it's not like they don't give us commercials during our fights. Like, bro, the zone is on my shit list. You know? But anyway... Um, something in my, in my gut is telling me Canelo versus Golovkin ain't going to do 500,000 pay-per-view buys. And something in my gut is also telling me that pay-per-view numbers have been inflated and are being inflated. Oscar De La Hoya talked about it, you know, in a fight hype interview, but you never know what to fucking believe out of his mouth or any of these people in a real, for real, for real. You know, especially when it comes to Tank Davis numbers. But we talked about it yesterday about how, like, streaming is getting so easy. Streaming is getting, it's too easy. And it's in high definition. And when you got the VPNs and all that, there's nothing they can do about it. So in this tough-ass economy, you can't just be throwing out pay-per-views for third fights and be like, oh, shit, you know, fights that are two years too late. I forgot what the official, what the, what the numbers were. They said Candelo versus Bevo did. I think it was around what, 425, between 375,000 buys to 400,000 buys. But then you have other people saying, no, nah, that shit flopped. It did 200,000 buys. Some shit. But I don't think these pay-per-views are doing as good because it's too easy to stream. And the hardcore boxing fans, the ones that are staying in and watching these fights, you think they're like, these motherfuckers are not really paying. I know you, you got good talents. Look at the fucking chat. Go to people fucking videos, not even mine. And they're talking about, yeah, we're going to just stream that shit. Fuck them. All these damn pay-per-views. Chicken is too damn high. You want some shrimp is too damn high. You want some beef, some ground beef. It's too damn high. You know, you want to get a, the, the family box of, of Apple Jacks. It's too damn high. And in smaller packaging, people just can't afford it. Gas prices and shit. Oh, gas is down to $4 or something a gallon. It's still $4. It's too high. So then they're like, oh, yeah, look, pay for this pay-per-view. And then buy another one next month. Wild. Wild, wild times. So a part of me feels that Canelo Golovkin, 500,000, 450,000. I don't like, I'm just not like, where is like, is there a buzz for it right now? It's not like it was for the first fight or the second fight when HBO was still around and shit, when it had like that big machine pumping it. But this is a third fight that, in my opinion, for it to be happening on the zone and just, it just seems like it's just too. Two years too late. It's just two years too late. You know? Two years too late. But as far as the undercard is concerned, Diego Pacheco versus Enrique Colazzo, Austin Ammo Williams versus uh, Kieran Conway, Ali Akhmedov versus Gabriel Rosado, Jesse Bam Rodriguez versus Israel Gonzalez. You know, and you got Mark Castro fighting somebody. I mean, yeah, you got, you know, up and coming rising prospects in Mark Castro, Diego Pacheco, and also Emma Williams. And you got, you know, um, one of the fighters of the year, Jesse Bam Rodriguez. But in reality, and maybe I'm just that type of boxing fan now where it's like you can't really, you know, like sell me with shit like this no more. These fights don't really mean nothing. The only fight that really is like really, really sticking out is Ali Akhmedov versus uh, Gabriel Rosadov. Rosado. And what about tickets? Do you hear people saying, yo, we had in the Vegas uh, September the 17th. You know, we're going to see this shit. We're going to be there live in a T-Mobile arena. I did see a report somewhere recently that they slashed ticket prices, but that happens in all boxing events, to be honest. The economy, the GDP, two, two bad quarters. That's it. It's a recession, ladies and gentlemen. Home prices are too, is too high.
the interest rates. The kids don't want to work. They want to steal streams and do TikToks. That's it. But yeah, if I was to rate this under card, I'm going to give it as... I'm going to rate the overall cards because the main event is carrying the card. I'm going to rate it... I'm going to give it a B. Not a B minus, not a B plus. Overall card, let me give it a B. Not a B plus, because that's too close to an A. Can't be a B plus. What do you guys rate this card on a, on a plus minus scale? Remember, we got Mark Castro, Diego Pacheco, Austin Ammo Williams, Ali Akhmedov versus Gabriel Rosado, Bam Rodriguez. It's a good card, but it's not a great card. I'm giving it a B. That's where I'm standing. I'm giving it a B.